In this presentation, we're going to look at how to construct box plots with R. So first off, we'll talk about the components of a box plot. The location and shape of the central component, which is known as the box, is determined by the following values. The first quartile, the median, and the third quartile. The shape of the box is the the shape of the box plot is also determined by a couple of other things. For example, are there any outliers in the data set? There are two possible sets of outliers. There are the higher end outliers, any values greater than Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR, and any values less than Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR, where IQR is the interquartile range, and that is computed as Q3 minus Q1. The whiskers are set at these values here, so the largest value that's not considered an outlier is the is the location of the upper whisker. Likewise, the smallest value, again, as long as it's not considered an outlier, is the location of the lower whisker. So let's look at a example now. I'm going to attach the iris data set. That means that we can use an inbuilt data set known as the iris data set. So this is just a, a couple of remarks there from what I was doing uh, preparing for this presentation. So box plot of sepal length, let's say. And let's see what that looks like. We have it here. So we have, this is the most elementary example of a box plot given to us by R. And what I'm first off I'm going to do is to sort of arrange it horizontally. So horizontal equals true. Now, there we have it horizontal line. I find that easier to look at actually than the vertical orientation. So this is the minimum value. There are no outliers in this data set. The outliers are presented are are indicated by the presence of little circles at the other end of the whiskers. So this is the lower whisker. It's also the data minimum. This is the box here. This is Q1, Q3, Q, uh, Q1. This is the median, and this is Q3, Q3, and this is the maximum value, and also the upper whisker. Let's have a look at a different data set here where there would be a outlier or two. So sepal width. And let's have a look at that now. Here there are outliers. So this value here is the minimum value, but it's considered to be an outlier. This next value here is the lowest value not considered to be an outlier. Likewise, at the other end, we have three outliers up here. This is the maximum value, but it's considered to be an outlier. These two values are also outliers. This value here is not an outlier. Right, now, color the box plots in if we want. Color equals, let's say, yellow. There we go. Now, what I want to do now is actually uh, look at the categorizing using box plot to sort of look at how value uh, how data is distributed across subcategories. Now, with the iris data set, we have three subcategories: the species categories, Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to box plot and I'm going to split it up by species. And again horizontally equals true. What we have here are uh, three box plots together. These are the sepal width values of the 
uh, or maybe sepal length, I can't remember, of the three subsets of the iris data set. The first box plot here is the virginica values. The second box plot here is the versicolor values. And the third box plot here is the setosa values. Now what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to turn them in a bit to make it easier to look at. So what I'm going to do is go color equals C red blue and green and close that. Now let's have a look at that. Now that's a good bit better. This buck this outlier here is still hard to detect looking at it, but overall this is a big improvement on the default settings. And again that actually is very informative box plot about the distribution of values across the three subcategories. So that ends the presentation. I'm going to shut down now. There we go.